Okay, so we've got our data. Let's now have a look at the calculation of how we find the specific heat capacity of our aluminium block. So, so far we have, for both aluminium and water, the mass, the two quantities, their initial temperatures, their final temperature, and from that, their change in temperature, the delta T. We've given water's specific heat capacity of 4,200 joules per kilogram per kelvin, and of course the aluminium is the one we're trying to find. That's the whole objective of this experiment. So let's look at the calculation. First of all, we know that the heat lost by the aluminium is equal to the heat gained by the water. This is the basic concept of the first law of thermodynamics, where heat, or rather energy, cannot be created or destroyed. So we know the MC delta T of the aluminium, the heat loss, is equal to the MC delta T of the water, the heat gained. Sub in our values from our table, a mass of 0 0.0205 in kilograms. Specific heat of C we're trying to calculate for aluminium, and its change in temperature, the delta T, was 51.1 degrees Celsius, or you could also call it Kelvin. The mass of the water was 82.1 grams, or 0 0.0821 kilograms. Specific heat capacity we're using is 4,200, because that's a known quantity for water. And the water, having a much higher specific heat capacity than most metals, only raised or elevated 2.4 degrees Celsius, or Kelvin. So multiplying our numbers, on the left hand side and the right hand side, we end up with 1.04755C equals 827.568. Dividing through by the fact that 1.04755 gives us our value for C, which is found to be 790 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Now this is in the right order of magnitude for aluminium, however it is a little bit lower than expected. Have a think about why we'd have a lower specific heat capacity. Anyway, I hope this explained how to carry out an experiment that allows us to calculate the unknown specific heat capacity of a metal sample. Thanks for watching.